It's three and a half years since the last election, and it's never a bad idea to ask the people of British Columbia what they think, and that's what we're going to be doing on October 24th. And that day has arrived. Good evening. This is City News at 6 for Saturday, October 24th. And yes, it's voting day here in B.C. NDP leader John Horgan called this snap election five weeks ago, one year before the fixed voting date in B.C. When the legislature was dissolved last month, the NDP were just a few seats away from a majority government. And John Horgan had one of the highest approval ratings of premiers in Canada. But will voters give him a majority after being thrown into a provincial election in the middle of a global pandemic? It's something Horgan has been heavily criticized for by the B.C. Liberals and B.C. Green Party throughout this campaign. But the politicians have made their final pitches and now the election is in the hands of you, the voter. This is a special edition of City News at 6 and it starts right now. Good evening. We're live at a new Westminster polling station, which has been open since 8 a.m. this morning, and it's going to close in about two hours at 8 p.m. But this election has been far from typical, as we know. And because of the pandemic, mail-in votes, about half a million have been received already by Elections BC. And you can see on the floor here, there's uh, lots of tape trying to ensure physical distancing from voters. But I don't know if that was really necessary today. We've only seen a couple voters come in and out every Every few minutes. Of course, masks are required here. It's been a very different election. We did a poll on Twitter today, and about of the 500 people who replied, 70% says there were no waits at all when they visited a polling station in BC. I had a little walk through the polling station to see how things have changed for voters due to COVID-19. And as you can see, everything is spaced out. Masks are a must, and pencils are one-time use until they are sanitized by Elections BC. But with so many ways to vote, we asked those casting their ballot today why they opted to wait until Election Day to make their big decision. I wanted to do the mail-in, but then uh, the, the timing wasn't right. Uh, then I was like, oh, there won't be enough time. I mean, it was kind of the same. It was fine. Yeah. It was nice. It was easy. You easy. go in, you declare, you check your box, and you get out. The question now is when will we find out the final results? Elections BC says it's using the same process as this year as in the past few year, past few elections. What will be different this time around is the number and percentage of ballots actually counted on election night. Usually, 90% of all ballots cast in an election are counted on election night. In this election, it could be between 65 to 70% of all ballots will be counted and reported on election night, with the remainder, perhaps 30 to 35 percent, counted at final count. Specifically, mail-in and absentee ballots could impact those close races, and we might not know the results for a few weeks from now. And if you're in your living room looking at your kitchen counter and you see that mail-in ballot, you can still submit your vote. You can bring it in person to any polling station across BC and submit it before 8 p.m. tonight. Stay tuned to City News throughout the hour and at 11. And of course, check us out on citynews1130.com and on the radio at News 1130 for all your election coverage. I'm Lisa Eusdiv with News 1130, live here at the NDP headquarters in downtown Vancouver. This podium behind me, that's where we're going to see leader John Horgan speaking a few hours from now. He's certainly hoping it's going to be a victory speech. They're going for a majority mandate in this election. Earlier today, as other candidates were doing the day of voting in their riding, John Horgan already voted in his riding on the island in advanced polls. He was out walking on the seawall in Science World. Why was he there? Well, it's a key riding for the NDP. Vancouver Falls Creek currently held by Sam Sullivan, but they're hoping businesswoman Brenda Bailey will take that seat for them. A couple other key ridings in Metro Vancouver are Vancouver Langara. Liberal Mike Lee now holds that. They're hoping Tessica Chuang can take that from him. And in Richmond, Queensboro, Jez Johal, the Liberal in that seat right now, they're hoping that Amon Singh can take it away from him. It's certainly going to be very interesting tonight as all the votes are counted and you can watch it all tonight. We'll be here all night live and also at citynews1130.com. 
I'm Marcello Bernardo with News 1130 Radio, and I'm at the Sheridan Wall Centre, which is the headquarters for the B.C. Liberals tonight, as they await to see what the numbers are going to be when the polls close at 8 o'clock. We are in a very different time here with this pandemic election, and this room is usually much, much smaller and full of people, or much larger, and full of uh, lots of crowds. But right now, there's only a few members of the media in the room as we're reporting on what we can expect this evening when the polls close at 8 o'clock. Earlier today, Liberal leader Andrew Wilkinson voted in his riding in Vancouver, Quilchena. And so it's going to be an interesting evening as we wait for Mr. Wilkinson to come downstairs from the another room in the hotel where he is going to be watching the results. We were told that he's going to be here sometime after 9 o'clock to talk to reporters about uh, what the next step is for him. Again, this is a do-or-die night for him. If he loses this election, there's a lot of speculation that he will step down as leader. And uh, there's a lot of speculation as well as to how many seats the Liberals will be able to hold on to uh, heading into uh, later into the evening when we may or may not have a clear winner. We've also been keeping an eye on the B.C. Greens today. Party leader Sonia Firstino casting her ballot this morning on Vancouver Island. First to know, dropping into the voting station at the Shawnigan Lake Community Centre in the Cowichan Valley riding where she's vying for re-election. The Green leader in good spirits today, taking a couple minutes to speak to media just after voting. Every time I'm like, did I vote for the right person? <laughs> but I did, I checked twice. Um, but, you know, I, I voted in every election, I think, since I've been 18 years old. It's so important to vote. It's, uh, it's, it's important to recognize how precious democracy is. It's good. I'm, I'm really happy that with what's going on in the world right now, we can still all come out and vote and, and do what uh, we're allowed to do as Canadians, which is amazing. I think it's pretty safe. we got all the masks and everyone's social distancing. and It's not much different than going to the grocery store these days. So, Yeah, I think it's actually pretty irresponsible to call an election in the middle of COVID, especially when our numbers are going up, highest they've ever been, and choose an opportunity to get people to gather in spaces, indoor spaces. I think it's pretty irresponsible. First to know was named Green Leader just one week before this snap election was called. Despite the initial scramble to find Green candidates, she says she's proud of the campaign her party put together on such short notice. And while she might not have had the same name recognition as John Horgan or Andrew Wilkinson, Sonia Firstenau definitely made an impression on British Columbians during the televised leaders' debate. Many considered her the winner of the debate, taking the other party leaders to task on their policy decisions and giving clear and concise answers to the moderator's questions, all while coming across as more relatable than her counterparts. The Greens are the only party on Vancouver Island tonight with their election headquarters in Victoria. Hi everyone, welcome to election night coverage here in BC. It is going to be a busy night, but an exciting night. We have got a dedicated team here at News 1130. I'm in the News 1130 newsroom right now. And we've got this team as well as our colleagues at City TV. We are going to bring you all the latest tonight on the ups and downs of election night. We're not going to quite know who won the election tonight when polls close mm -hmm. at 8 because there are so many ballots to still count. But we are going to bring you everything you need to know, including all the major ridings, what's happening there, both in Metro Vancouver and outside of Metro Vancouver, right across the province. We will be with the leaders of all the three major parties, and we're going to bring you all the information you need to know, including full analysis. So join us on air from 7 until midnight. You will hear from all of us here in the newsroom as well as City TV. We will have the very latest for you on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and of course Instagram, and the very latest on our website at citynews1130.com. For City News, I'm News 1130, Sonia Aslam.